Have you ever stopped to analyze why animals behave as they do? Or what this behavior may mean to your own personal safety? Have you ever thought there might be an easier way, safer, less stressful way to handle your cattle? One in five of all farm and ranch injuries serious enough to require hospitalization are livestock related. Among senior men ages 60 and over, many of these injuries are fatal. I am in that group that has lots of experience, but with all that, in spite of that experience, I'm in the danger zone. I'm where most of the, the deaths occur in ranching. We have to be aware of this and, and uh, to search and, and try to follow practices that are safe. Uh, we want to deal with smart risk, not dumb risk. No one sets out to have trouble. The majority of people, they step out the door in the morning, they're wanting to get a job done and they're wanting it to go smooth, and they're not wanting anyone to get hurt, and they're wanting it to be efficient and safe and an enjoyable process. Accidents, of course, are not supposed to be accidents. Things happen, and they can happen very quickly, and unless you've had a level of experience and size and maturity, it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty frightening. I've handled cattle ever since I was big enough to handle cattle, when, even when I was going to school in earlier days. It doesn't matter how much experience you've had with cattle, but they always need to be handled with caution. I was injured by not my own cattle, but our neighbors, uh, they were semitall and they went just crazy. One poked me around about six times down to the floor and I thought it was time for me to get out of there. That was just before I had my angioplasties. I've grown up with cattle and horses my whole life, so I'm very comfortable with them. But um, a first time calver, had no idea what she was going to be like and she seemed calm and um, was totally taken with her calf. There wasn't a problem. The calf was up, everything seemed to be good, but she just suddenly did a, a 90 degree turn, left her calf and came charging over and um, the whole time she was coming at me I kept thinking she's going to back off. Eventually she'll turn and go back to her calf and she didn't. She, she hit me right in the chest and um, I was very close to the, the uh, shelter wall and she pinned me up against the wall and just kept hammering away at my chest. And I, don't even, I don't even know how many times she would have hit me, probably 20 times. I guess in a little bit of a way, I was a little lucky to come out of it as good as I did. Uh, Eric uh, got kicked uh, the spring and he decided there was a piece of rope on the ground and he bent over to pick it up, not realizing he was close to a calf and the calf just kicked him. Uh, so uh, that sort of thing. Uh, just inattention to a little detail sometimes can, uh, can get you in a, in a problem. Indeed, individuals may work carefully around animals 90% of the time, but then are injured because of haste, impatience, anger or just because of a preoccupied mind. And it's during these moments that a livestock handler really needs to understand animal behavior to learn ways of reducing risk using some simple cattle handling techniques. Expert cattle handlers such as Bud Williams and Dylan Biggs conduct courses across Canada and the United States which focus on replacing fear and force with proper position and movement. There are also videos such as this one which demonstrate this technique. <coughs> But I got to thinking that, geez, there's got to be a better way to do this. I just figured there had to be some way we could get these cattle moved and worked in a safe, efficient manner that didn't involve all of the stress, all the hitting and yelling and hollering and, and things that sometimes go on, you know. I don't care what you call it. What we need done is we need our cows to start. We need to be able to control direction. We need to be able to speed them up slow them down, and we need to be able to stop them. Uh, and you can do all that without any yelling or hitting, and you can achieve all that just by virtue of your position and your movement, then this is a good thing. This is a good thing. And this is what I classify as a manageable herd. And manageability isn't the only benefit. Dr. Temple Grandin, Associate Professor of Animal Science at Colorado State University, has shown that using behavioral principles to reduce stress also increases productivity. 
livestock showed faster weight gain, less disease and injury, and more milk in dairy cows. Well, I certainly recommend uh, to anybody that works with cattle to, to either get a, a video or go and take a course and, and realize that the way you've always looked at it is maybe not the best. Well, we just did it like everybody else did it back uh, until about 10 years ago. I went and took a course with uh, Bud Williams had a seminar down in Kempville and uh, decided to go down and uh, I took my oldest son Ian who's here today uh, with me and we went and, and participated in that. And it was a really interesting approach. And uh, we came back and we experimented with it quite a bit and found that it actually did work. It's a combination of training the animals and training yourself. You can't, one doesn't work without the other. And the thing about it is, is that whether we know it or not, every time we're out there working cattle, we're training them. Whether we know it or not, we're training them either to be more manageable or less manageable. We're training them either to be more nervous or less nervous. Every time we interact with these cattle, we're training them. Cattle form a lasting impression of painful or frightening events. This can result in future problems. So how do we train them? Many of the safe handling techniques are based on the instinctual behavior patterns of the animals. If you understand the behavior patterns, you can reduce stress, improve productivity, improve handler safety, and improve animal welfare. Cows that are calm and relaxed are a lot safer. And uh, if we don't want to get hurt and we don't want to bust up our uh, facilities, then what we need are calm, relaxed cows, and we need to be calm and relaxed. It's funny is that the behavior of our cows almost exactly mirrors our behavior. You know, and if we want to modify our cows' behavior, we have to modify our behavior. Animals are no different than people. You handle them decent, they'll handle you decent. You know, livestock are prey species, and we're predators. And the instant we start behaving like predators, i.e. chasing them, then they start behaving like prey, and they start running. And then the question is, so what do you have in your repertoire then to deal with that situation? Well, rule number one is do not chase them. The thing is, is if we chase them, we're saying to them that there's a legitimate reason to run, right? And if you didn't chase after them, if you just followed them at a walk, so they spook and run and you just start following them at a walk, and they turn around and look at you and say, well, he's not chasing us. And pretty soon they just plumb won't run. You'll be able to walk right up to them and start pressuring them. And they'll say, oh, this guy's not going to chase us. And they won't run. They just slow down just a little. You just need like a half a second more patience than the cow. That's all you need, you see. I, th I think the main thing is that we've, uh, we tend to hide our watches now when we want to move them. Uh, that's the biggest thing. Take your time. Look around. Be aware of which cows are the dominant ones, which ones are followers and everything. Uh, make sure you've got your day well planned so that you don't have to get everything done in five minutes. You've got to have some time ahead of you and usually it goes quicker that way anyway. Uh, now the thing is, is that patience alone is not going to make this thing work. It's a matter of figuring out how to combine the patience when it's required with knowing when to pressure and how to pressure when that's required. And People always talk about this flight zone, and it's pressure in the flight zone that we need to learn to do. So just what is a flight zone? It's a zone around the animal where uh, the animal will react uh, depending on what you do. And I just call it like her personal space. This is this cow's personal space or this herd's personal space. And what we're going to do with this pressure is we're going to pressure and release uh, into that personal space in a strategic manner. We're going to infringe into her personal space in a strategic manner to get her to do what we want her to do. When you can have a lot of fun with on, on, on horseback where we, we move them a lot, uh, moving in and out of the flight zone where you can move a herd of cattle by the side, not just pushing them from the rear end. It, it, it's fun to see how it works and it really does work. The flight zone boundary and the point of balance of an animal are crucial to low stress handling of cattle. The flight zone is that circle around the animal as shown in this illustration. The point of balance is its shoulder. If you stand straight across from the shoulder, it is likely that the animal won't move. In fact, if you're anywhere outside of his flight zone boundary, he won't move. By moving in and out of that boundary, we can start the animal or we can stop him. It all revolves around that point of balance. It's also key to remember that an animal has a blind spot, just like you and I have a blind spot when driving a car. 
If we move into the animal's blind spot, the animal will stop. He can't see us. He may be confused or feel endangered. An animal that senses danger might kick into its blind spot, so it's best to avoid that area. Also note that an animal that has been injured may kick toward its injured side. But the thing about it is, is that the flight zone on every animal is different. And on some cows, the flight zone's like this. That means they'll take more pressure here in the head than they will here in the hip. And in a lot of cows, it may be the opposite way. It may be big up top and narrow back here. And they'll take less pressure here and more pressure here. Some cows, it may be homogenous. Now, our job is to pay attention to what the cow's telling us, and then it doesn't really matter what her flight zone is because we'll be able to figure it out. Because when we pressure into her hip and she steps up or she doesn't step up, then she's telling us we need more pressure, we need less pressure. And the neat thing about it is, is our, if this could be a herd of 100 cows here, and basically, in terms of where you pressure and how they respond to pressure, a herd takes pressure and responds to pressure basically the same as a cow. If you once you got a herd of cattle together, you can basically think of it as just like it was an individual cow. When moving a herd of cattle forward, start at the back of your desired direction. From your starting point, cross the back of the herd in a zigzag motion. Ignore stragglers. By repeating the zigzag pattern, handler movement makes the whole herd move forward. Stopping slightly past the points of balance causes the herd to become narrow. As the herd is becoming narrower, the zigzag pattern becomes condensed. Crossing the point of balance makes the herd feel calm and relaxed. If you can figure out how to keep them calm and relaxed, then they'll be soft and they'll take pressure and we can get everything done we need. Because most cattle prefer the familiar, anything that looks out of place may cause fear. Even a styrofoam cup on the ground can make them balk. Sudden movements are the most fear-provoking. Announce your presence well in advance to avoid startling the animal. Be aware that they are sensitive to certain sounds. Loud noises, for instance, might cause them to crash into a person while trying to avoid that noise. The shouting is, is something that we work on all the time, reminding ourselves. Uh, when you shout and holler at one animal, uh, the, the herd of 20, 30, or 40, or 50, they all hear that, and uh, it, it's certainly not productive. Eyesight is also an issue for cattle. Because they are grazing animals, they see better at a distance and have difficulty focusing quickly on nearby objects. Be wary of coming in too close to their vision area, and don't approach from behind. Cattle have a nearly 360-degree field of vision. Common distractions to avoid include bright light, including sunlight, shiny reflections, and high contrast colors, metal clanging or banging, high-pitched noises or hissing air, movements such as clothing blowing in the wind, fan blades, and obstacles such as changes in flooring texture or drain grates on the floor. Dr. Temple Grandin has focused on the design and upkeep of cattle handling facilities in her research. She advises producers to keep facilities in good repair, provide adequate lighting since cattle are spooked by shadows, make sure floors, chutes, and ramps have a non-slip footing, and keep those surfaces dry, make ramp slopes gradual, keep chutes narrow enough that cattle can't turn around, fill holding pens no more than half to three quarters full for easy movement and sorting. Some cattle handlers have included specialized hardware, such as the Canadian-made livestock tailgate, as part of their facilities. Because the animals can see through the tailgate, they are not afraid to push through. As they do, the tailgate falls behind them, preventing them from backing up. Cattle tend to move in circles, so it is best to design handling facilities and systems to accommodate that tendency. This illustration shows the cattle moving from the collection alley into a holding pen, then into a crowding pen, a single file working chute, and finally into the sorting pen, always moving in that circular motion. To move cattle forward through a squeeze chute, cross the animal's points of balance to repeat, return leaving the flight zone. The cattle will move forward as the handler crosses the points of balance. One of the uh changes that may that we've made with our corral handling system the the corrals that we inherited uh, it was difficult to get cattle to move easily through them and uh, we've rebuilt them now and and uh, with a combination of a, a curved corral a curved chute area and uh, large panels that would uh, uh, help direct the cattle's attention to the escape route has made cattle handling a great deal uh, easier and, and uh, less stress in the animals and, and certainly safer for the cattle handlers. We have made a point to 
install some cattle handling facilities. We've got some chutes here, which are really important because if you're, when you're handling the livestock, you have to give some injections or you've got to, to treat an, a sick animal. You just can't lasso them in the, in, the, uh, in the pasture because you just get hurt. Of course, even if you have paid attention to flight zones and have upgraded your facilities to take into consideration the animal's behavior patterns, care should still be taken when dealing with cattle. Well, one thing for sure, you really have to be careful when you're trying to separate one animal. If you've got one sick animal or one, one cow that has to be uh, artificially inseminated, when you separate one animal from the herd, they have such a strong herding instinct that they, they really want to get back with the rest of the herd and they'll do anything. They'll jump over top of you to get back with the others. In handling cattle, no matter what the breed, remember, they are a live animal and they need to handle with caution. Really have to keep your eyes on the cattle all the time. Um, and knowing, knowing your cattle and, and observing them to know what's normal will give you a better clue when you see something that is abnormal. Always leave a way out. Whenever you're, you're handling them, always um, just somewhere in the back of your mind, you know, if they come after me, how am I gonna get out of here? Um, don't ever get yourself sort of cornered into a situation where you're not gonna be able to get out. Bulls especially demand attention. They account for over 40% of all livestock fatalities on Canadian farms and ranches. We, we run a purebred herd, so we have purebred bulls and we have about 30 of them on the yard and I guess bulls you always give a little more respect to because you know what they can do and, and you know how they can act so you're always kind of watching them. By creating a manageable herd you'll make your farming or ranching operation cost-effective, efficient and safe. This works, I guarantee you it works. <laughs>